Great. Well, let me introduce our topic to you for tonight for our date night number one. Uh, this morning we talked about our families, our family cycle, stuff that we needed to leave, cleave, and become one. So we, we talked about when God brought Adam and Eve together, he set up this blueprint for every other marriage, that for your marriage to really be successful, you've got to leave all of the old stuff behind, then you've got to cleave, you've got to stick together, right? And then become one flesh. And so we looked at four different areas that you need to sort of leave from your old family, or maybe it's from uh, your current stuff that you have now, the concepts of what normal is, leave past hurts, all those sorts of things. Well, uh, tonight I just want to introduce the topic to you of uh, looking back at your family map, all right? Sometimes before you can move forward and sometimes before you can really understand what your spouse is doing, why they think something is normal, you have to look at sort of the family that they came from, all right? And so that can be scary. Everybody take a deep breath, all right? <laughs> that that, that could be a little nerve-wracking, uh, but we're going to have some fun with it. But um, there, there's a, a little thing I want to introduce you to. It's called a family map, and there's this sliding scale. You've got on your sheet. Uh, if you didn't get a sheet, raise your hand and uh, we'll get one of those for you. I totally gave you one, but your, your, kid, your kid ate it, I think is what it was. He slobbered on it. All right, I'm going to blame it on Sean Travolta Blackwood Jr. this second. All right, so if you've got your date night sheet, all right, I want you to look at the front. Uh, this, this concept helped me so much when Katie and I were dating, and I've shared it with every couple I've ever done premarital counseling for, um, and, and I want you to look at your family map. Now, this is the family that you come from. Now, uh, you may think, well, what does it matter, the family that I've come from? I've been married 20, 30, 40, 50 years. I want, I want to tell you, it totally matters because it influences you for generation upon generation. You may, you may discover tonight why you do some of the things that you do, or your spouse may discover tonight why you do some of the things you do. It'll be like a light bulb that goes off and says, oh, that totally makes sense, all right? So uh, this little family scale, I just want to talk to you about it for a few minutes, and then I'm going to let you go, and you can sort of be on your way on your date night, and this is sort of the theme for our night. Um, th this family scale, it ma measures a couple of things. It measures your relatedness as a family, and then it also measures your adaptability, all right? So the, the scale that goes uh, vertically is your adaptability scale, and, and then the, the, the one that goes horizontally is your relational scale, all right? So wherever you are on this scale, one of your family is represented in some way. So I, I just want to go through really quickly, I'll describe all four points of this sort of family map, and then what I want you to do is to plot yourself on the family map, where you came from, your family of origin, the family you grew up in, and then I want your spouse to do the same thing, and then you're going to get a chance to talk about it, all right? So let's look at the relational scale. This goes from the word disengaged to totally enmeshed, all right? This is how close your family relationships were, all right? So for those of you that had uh, completely sort of independent lives, it, you sort of did everything on your own. You lived your life separately. Everybody was sort of into their own hobby or their own thing. Uh, you're sort of disengaged from one another. If you're not like this totally lovey, feely, you know, you, you didn't hug on each other all the time and, and there wasn't all sorts of stuff like that in your home, then your family probably leaned more towards this disengaged, all right? This has to do with your emotions, how you relate to one another, sort of uh, how much time you spend together doing stuff versus how much time you spend as individuals doing things. So if your family was more sort of leading their own separate lives and this person does this and this person does this and dad's out in the shop working on his stuff and mom's in the house doing her stuff and we just sort of went to our rooms all the time, uh, then, then this is sort of a disengaged thing. If your family wasn't uh, these super huggy feely people, you're, you're probably more on this end of the spectrum. So you're on the disengaged side. Now, you flip that to the exact opposite end of the spectrum, all right? This is like if your husband called his mom on your wedding day uh, as you're driving to the honeymoon, right? This is, Mom, I miss you so bad. I love you. You're incredible. Mama, there'll never be another woman like you on the planet, right? All right, I want to tell you, this is sort of the enmeshed family. Now, these, this family is close, right? But they're almost too close. Like, they know absolutely everything about one another. They, they still do things that they really should be sort of interdependent instead of dependent. But it's like they, they need their mama or their daddy to do this, stuff that they should be able to do on their own, right? And so uh, their family time definitely is hanging out in the den or in the living room or they're around the kitchen table and sort of they're involved in everything's business, right? They know everything about the 
dating relationship. They're totally enmeshed. They're totally engaged with one another. Always spending tons of time together. But you sort of smother one another. Okay? All right? so, so, so on this scale, I want you to think about it. Now, somewhere in between is what we like to call a balance. Right? It's sort of a balanced family. A normal, balanced, healthy family. So I want you to think about which end of the spectrum did your family of origin swing towards, all right? Were you more disengaged, sort of separated, independent, completely independent on your stuff, or were you sort of enmeshed where all the relationships sort of have no boundaries and you just kind of bleed over into each other like this solid blob of fun and love, all right? Uh, so think about that. Plot it on that scale. Now, the other side of the scale, the vertical line, is the flexibility scale, all right? And so this uh, talks about how flexible you were in your home. All right, so at the top, there's the chaotic family. You remember the movie Mrs. Doubtfire from forever ago? Remember that one? He, he lived in a chaotic family. He, he wanted it to be like the most amazing discovery time and sort of crazy, and there's not like one person that's the ruler or the leader of the family. It's sort of we all discover, we all have fun together, and there's not really tons and tons of rules. It's all about the interaction. It's all about the relationship. It's all about fun. And we're going to let them discover on their own, right? We're not going to like set this rigid sort of disciplinary path. We're, we're going to let them learn from their own mistakes. They're going to learn from their own stuff and so it's just sort of a free-for-all of fun all right that's sort of the chaotic family now on the other side you got like the drill sergeant right did you grow up in a home like that the rigid family this was sort of like the strict taskmaster there's usually one authoritarian leader like they've got the word uh, everybody else's word really doesn't matter it's only what the one person says there's sort of a strict regimen of this is what we're gonna do this is how we act this is the way things are there's a rule for everything like for anything and everything there's this rule, right? And, and so a lot of times love is sort of determined by how closely you're following the standard regimen, all right? This is sort of the typical sort of military family, all right? So you've got chaotic and rigid, all right? So now I want you to think about where do you fit on that scale, all right? From your family of origin, is your family more enmeshed and sort of up into the chaotic scale, right? You, you, you had no rules. It was all about fun, and there was just this overwhelming relationship where there were no boundaries. Uh, do you more swing towards uh, a rigid enmeshed family, right? It's, there was one ruler in the house and what he said go, but you, you, were, you guys were really close. They were sort of over controlling and manipulative about everything that happened, right? Or do you swing more towards the other side of the scale where you're disengaged and rigid? This is, this is all the rules with none of the relationship, right? I mean, you've got all these things that have to be done and it's this one person is the leader and what I say goes and all the my way or the highway but then you never really relate to one another either you're just sort of off on your own that would be a rigid and disengaged family or uh, maybe you're disengaged and chaotic right it's just everybody does their complete on thing right so I want you to think about where you fit on that scale and right now look at your sheet and go ahead and plot it if you had to pick one where what, fan, what one did your family swing more towards all right go ahead take just a second I'll hum the Jeopardy theme song Was your family disengaged and chaotic, disengaged and rigid, rigid and enmeshed, or chaotic and enmeshed? All right, everybody got it? Everybody got what you were? Fantastic. All right, now I want you to show your spouse which one you are and look at which one they are. And I want you to tell me, is it the same or is it different? How many people had the same families? Okay, a few people, right? How many had different families of origin? All right, All right. That, you, you've heard the term opposites attract, right? I mean, there, there's some sort of truth to that for a lot of folks. Now, if you really enjoyed the family that you grew up in, then sometimes you want to find that same family. If it felt like home to you, if it felt comfortable to you, and it was sort of the thing that you wanted, then sort of you want to replace that. All right. So now I, I want you to think through some of the issues. All right. Let's, let's just have like this one scenario. We'll do a scenario for a couple different ones, and then I'm going to let you go. All right. So this is sort of your family that you came from. And, and so you've got, let's say you've got a guy who is, comes from a, a disengaged, chaotic family, right? And he marries a girl who's from a rigid, enmeshed family. What do you think some of the issues are that they're going to have? Right? He, looks home, he comes home and he's like, why are you talking to me? 
Why, why do you call me 12 times a day on the phone? Like, I, I don't want to talk to you right now. I'm, I'm, my family was disengaged. Like, I don't want to be smothered in a relationship. My, my family was disengaged. Like, he comes home, and he wants it to be a party. He wants it to be fun. And she comes home, and she's like, this is what time dinner is every single night. Hello? Dinner's on the table at 5.30. Why are you late? You know, and he's thinking, well, I was having this amazing thing at work, and my friends decided, hey, we were just going to go and have this unbelievable thing afterwards, right? I mean, you can imagine what happens in conflict when one person is disengaged and chaotic and one person is rigid and enmeshed. It's almost like uh, emotionally needy, longing for someone to come after them and rescue them. They need an authoritarian, right, who's going to be the one in charge. She's going to look at him and say, why are you never leading our family? Uh, you never lead. You're not like my dad. Like, he set the rules. He said, this is what goes. He told us what we were going to spend. He said, this is what we were going to budget. That was the way that you never lead. You're just spineless, right? Like, he's just thinking, I thought we all decided. I mean, we're just kind of on our own, right? I mean, it's sort of a chaotic leadership in his family. All right, let, let, let's flip the other way. What if it's a disengaged and sort of rigid family system, and then you have a spouse that comes from a chaotic and in mesh family, what what kind of issues do you gonna do you think you're gonna have when you're raising kids? How does that work? Yeah, yeah. One person's plan is, you know what? I'm just gonna smother them with love, right? And we're not gonna have all these crazy rules. We're gonna smother them with love. I mean, if you spank that kid's bottom, you're gonna squelch their spirit and their creativity, right? You know. And, and the other guy's thinking, what they need is a butt whipping, and they need to be sent to their room, right? They need to be by themselves, and this is the rules, all right? They broke a rule. What is there to understand? And she's like, but you don't understand his heart. I mean, I saw in his eyes that he really didn't want to do it. I mean, he really wanted to obey. And you're like, no, he disobeyed. He's going to time out. Whatever it is, right? You know, think, think about the difference in discipline. Now, I want you to think about the difference in how money would be handled, right? <laughs> Now, if she's from an enmeshed, chaotic family, it's like, you know, it's all about relationships. We don't care anything about a structure and sort of, we don't need to plan for retirement. Let's go on a vacation, right? And he's saying, a vacation? We spend enough time together already. Listen, we, we need to save. We're going we're gonna to be in a retirement home one day, and by God, I want to be in a good one. I want the good jello, right? I mean, he's, he's thinking... He's thinking, and you know what? We might have separate beds and separate rooms. I don't know. I mean, like, listen, we need to be prepared, all right? Think about this. So I want, you, I want you to think through all of these issues about the families that you've come from. Now, here's the goal. It's not that you try to get your partner to swing to the other side. It's, it's that together you try to become a balanced family. Because the truth is every family needs heavy relationships, and every family needs uh, some time where you're independent of one another, right? That, you need your own time, but you also need closeness. That's sort of a balanced family approach. Every family needs to have fun. I mean, fun needs to be a part of your life, but then you also need to have some structure that goes with the fun. So, so you see, you sort of come from these two polar things, and you come in this way, or maybe you're over here, and so you come this way, and and your goal is to try to make a balanced, healthy family. Does that make sense? All right, so um, I want you to think about sort of all these issues. And uh, I want you on your date night just to go out. All the questions are on the back. You're going to think through some of your family map issues and think back about how that's created some of the stuff in your marriage. Now, here's, here's what I would say really quickly. I just want to read this verse to you. Uh, read that next verse. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But, look at the next verse, the next slide. Showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Can I, can I just say this? Your family map is not your destiny right? I mean, you can totally change it. It's like we talked about with the cycles today, the cycles of sin, cycles of the concept of normal, all these things. These, these issues aren't your destiny. You can change them. Together, you really can find this healthy, new normal. And so, I want you to remember tonight that no family map that you've come from is your destiny. So, start to work towards that balanced family together. All right. So, I, I got a couple of date night ideas for you. Some of you were wondering, what do we do on our date night? Maybe it's been a while since you've been on a date. We need some good, cheap ideas for a date night. All right, I got five. I'll run over them real quick. Number one, do dinner out, but to save money, just share an entree. Or maybe you just go tapas style, right? Then you just get a, a couple of appetizers and split those. Uh, number two, take a hike. 
literally. Um, like go to Lake Norman State Park. They're, they're open until the close of dusk, I believe it is, is when the sun goes down. You can find a great trail at least to a lake. Uh, you can just go do that. That's a fantastic thing to do. Number three, pack a picnic. This is what Katie and I are doing tonight. Uh, we want to save some money, and also we are, ate bad for lunch, and so we want to eat good for dinner. And so we pack some stuff to go on a picnic together. We're just going to go to a park and hang out, and uh, she's going to feed me grapes. That's going to be fantastic. All right. <laughs> Number four. Go for a swim. Listen, your, your neighborhood pool might still be open. Or, uh, if you know somebody that's a member at the Y, bum a visitor pass off of them. Or if you're super adventurous and you don't mind swimming in sewage, jump in that lake. That's going to be fantastic. <laughs> All right. And then, then the last one, number five, number five, ingest some caffeine. Maybe just, listen, uh, you, you, your body has probably had enough calories for the day. You'll probably be all right. Maybe you can have a little snack later on. Just go to your favorite coffee place, get you some chai tea, maybe a, a vanilla something, whatever that means. I don't know. I don't know if it's grande or latte or whatever. But you just go and enjoy a little caffeination, all right? Stay up and enjoy talking to one another, okay? Does that make sense? There's a few date night ideas. I've got ten more. We'll, we'll talk about them sort of each week as we go.